Hello, welcome to another flip lesson for geometry. This one is on tessellations. There are so many great things in geometry that we really weren't able to get to this year. And I don't want the year to end without us looking at some of these really amazing applications of geometry out in the real world. And tessellations is certainly one of those. And you see here I have, I have all sorts of these tessellations. And a tessellation is basically where you fill up an entire flat surface with more, an image or more than one different type of image where there are no gaps and no overlaps between those images. And some of these tessellations are really famous. This was done by uh, the artist M.C. Escher. He was a Dutch artist. You, you may have seen a lot of his pictures hanging up around my room. This lizard's one is, a, is an Escher work. So are these horsemen and these Pegasus horses, but others um, this, by the way, is also an M.C. Escher. It's the long poster up in the front of my room that shows how uh, one tessellation morphs into uh, different types of tessellations. But some of these are just done by people just playing around with shapes and seeing how they can get shapes to look a certain way. So let's dive in and, and take a look at tessellations. Again, we have this definition of a tessellation. It's where you you cover an entire surface with shapes so there are no gaps and no overlaps. And we see tessellations all the time in, in the real world. Uh, brick walls, these are tessellated rectangles. Uh, tiled floors, these are some tessellating triangles. A checkerboard, tessellating squares. Uh, a beehive, it's a really great natural example of tessellating hexagons. And down here you have lots of other tessellations. This interesting tile work pattern, you see some triangles and some trapezoids being tessellated. Uh, here are some tessellating rhombi. Um, here we have squares and different shaped rectangles tessellating. Uh, here we have some squares tessellating with smaller squares. And here you even have, uh, I don't even know what these shapes are, but they're filling up this entire flat surface, leaving no gaps and no overlaps. So let's get in and, and, and talk about mathematically some of the different tessellations that are out there and some that we can make. And I want to start with one of the simplest ideas, and that is a regular tessellation. And a regular tessellation is one that involves using only one regular polygon to fill up the entire plane. Now remember, uh, a regular polygon is a polygon in which all sides and all angles are congruent. And uh, every polygon, triangle, quadrilateral, pentagon, there is a form of that in which all sides and all angles are congruent, and we call those regular. So uh, it turns out there are only three regular polygons that will tessellate on their own. And those three regular polygons are triangles, squares, and hexagons. And that's it. Those three are the only three regular polygons that tessellate on their own. Now we did see in, in the past uh, page, we did see rectangles tessellating, but remember rectangles are not regular quadrilaterals. Squares are regular quadrilaterals. But here we have triangles tessellating, leaving no gaps or overlaps. Squares are doing it, and hexagons are doing it. And so, you know, you might wonder, well, what, what about these other shapes? What about, uh, let's see, triangle, three sides, squares, four sides, hexagons. What about a five-sided shape, like a, like a pentagon? Well, let's take a look. Down here, I have pentagons. And you see, I've already put three regular pentagons together, and we have this gap right here. And so uh, another pentagon would not fit in that gap. And so pentagons don't tessellate on their own. Seven-sided figures, heptagons. You see, uh, I have three heptagons, and this one, boy, it doesn't look like it's going to fit in there. Let's see. I can, I can rotate it and, and just try to, try to slide it right in and look at that. Nope. You see that? There's an overlap. So heptagons, nope. I'm sorry. They do not, they do not tessellate on their own. Octagons. Eight-sided figures. Well, look at this. There's a hole there, and you know you might say, well, let's move this octagon up here, and maybe let's 
Let's copy that octagon and make it fit here. Octagons don't tessellate on their own, but you'll notice that octagons will tessellate if I combine them with a square. But that's not a regular tessellation where we use one polygon. That involves more than one regular polygon. And we'll, we'll get to that later on. But let's talk about this for a little bit here. You know, if Euclid was still around today, Euclid would say, how do we know mathematically? How do we know that there are only three? Like I saw the pictures, but how do I know like a, a 10 sided polygon, a decagon or a 15 sided polygon? How do I know that there aren't more out there? Well, as, as Mr. Brath would say, we can prove it. We can prove that there are only three. So let's take a look. So first of all, we have to agree that if we're going to tessellate, that means that any point on a, uh, on a plane, we have to be able to completely surround all 360 degrees around that point, leaving no gaps and overlaps. And that 360 degrees is really important. So let's go through and let's take a look at our, our shapes, our regular polygons. So we have the, the most basic or the, the smallest number of sides in a regular polygon in Euclidean geometry, a triangle, and then a regular quadrilateral or a square and a pentagon, hexagon, heptagon, and octagon. Now we've all studied regular polygons, so I'd like you to take just a moment and see if you can figure out what each interior angle of these shapes would have to measure. So why don't you pause the video and see if you can do the calculations to find what this interior angle right here is, this angle in a square, this angle in a regular pentagon, this angle in a regular hexagon, etc. Hey, welcome back. Hopefully you found that each angle in a regular triangle is 60 degrees. In the square, it's obviously 90. Hopefully you used your formulas to figure out 108 for a pentagon. 120 for a hexagon. Holy smokes, 128 and 4 7 degrees for a heptagon. And an octagon is 135 degrees. Okay, so what do these angles have to do with seeing what tessellates and what doesn't? Well, again, if we're going to tessellate around a point, completely fill up all the space around this point, we want shapes that are going to meet and there are going to be no gaps and no overlaps. They have to cover a full 360 degrees. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 360 degrees and we're going to divide it by this angle. And if this angle divides into 360 with no remainder, then that means this shape should tessellate. So let's try the triangle. 360 divided by 60, well, that's 6. And that six means it takes six triangles to completely wrap around a single point and form a tessellation. Let's take a look at that. See that right there? See how we have six equilateral, six regular triangles wrapping around that point? No gaps, no overlaps. Is 90 a whole number divisor of 360? Well, sure it is. 90 goes into 360 four times. And that tells me, since this is a whole number, it will take four squares to completely wrap around a single point. And we see that there. Pentagon. Well, what's 360 divided by 108? Well, I'll tell you what it isn't. It isn't a whole number. And so you see that it goes into uh, 360 divided by 108 is three and a third. So what's that mean? Well, that means that I can get three full pentagons around that point, and I would need a third of a pentagon to wedge right in there. And of course, a third of a pentagon is ludicrous. That's not a tessellation at all. And as we keep dividing these out, we see that hexagons takes three. Heptagons takes 2.8. So, you know, again, you see two heptagons side by side, and we would need eight tenths of a heptagon here. That is not a tessellation. Octagons, two and two thirds, and you see, nope, doesn't work. See how these overlap each other? Now notice as we progress down the line that the number of polygons we would need, this whole number component keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And what it seems to be doing is it seems to be nearing two. 
Well, is there any type of polygon where if we put two of them together, we get a full 360 degrees? Well, the answer there is no. As the number of sides increases, this interior angle increases, but it will never reach 180. So we're never going to get down to just two polygons. And so we've hit our limit. Now, let's talk about styles of tessellations. There are lots of styles of tessellations, but these are the three main ones. The first one is a translation. And a translation, you recall, is like a slide. And so you see this Pegasus example. To go from a white Pegasus to a black one, you slide to the right, or you slide to the left, or you slide up or down. Watch. I can grab this, and I can slide it over so the white lands on the black. I can slide it down so the white lands on the white, and that is a translation tessellation. And that looks pretty hard to make, but it actually is not that hard, and we'll learn why in a future video. A rotation tessellation. Notice to go from this red fish to this white fish, we're going to rotate about 60 degrees. And from this white fish to this red fish, we rotate. And these fish rotate around to go from one to the next. Watch. This fish rotates 60 degrees to that fish, which rotates to that fish, which rotates all the way around, completely covering this plane. And finally, a glide reflection. To go from this black horse down to this white horse, we have to do two things. We have to slide or glide it down, and then we have to flip it left or right. So if I take this first sheet and I flip it left or right, and now I slide it down, you see that the horses line up. And again, I can slide it back down, and I can flip it left to right, and we end up with black on black and white on white for those horses. Those are our three main types of reflections, and we'll go through how you can make those in a future video. Now, what types of tessellations do we have? Well, before we get into the types, there are some, some big rules I want to explain. One is all triangles tessellate. Notice you could sit here and draw a variety of triangles. I mean, you could just come right in here, pick a line, draw a triangle, and, and then add on to that triangle, and then add on to that triangle, and all triangles will tessellate. You can tessellate with any set of triangles at all. But you can actually tessellate with any type of triangle. It doesn't have to be equilateral. And in this shape right here, we'll tessellate with itself. Watch. I can just take this shape and I can reflect it right over this line. And notice we have a purple angle next to a red angle. What do we know about a purple angle, a red angle, and a green angle? Don't those three add, have to add up to be 180? So I can put another triangle with a green angle here, green, red, and purple. I know that green, red, and purple add up to be 180. And so I can keep just kind of tessellating right off of this and just keep adding these triangles over and over and over again and fill up the whole plane. All quadrilaterals tessellate. What do we know about the interior angles of all quadrilaterals? What do they always add up to be? 360. So as long as I have A, B, C, and D completely surrounding a point, I know that those angles will add up to be 360, thus covering the entire 360 degrees around that point. And finally, even though some regular polygons don't tessellate on their own, they can with other shapes. Like octagons don't tessellate on their own, but they do tessellate with squares. This purple shape is a decagon, 10 sides, and if we match it up with some hexagons and squares, you can see that we can form a tessellation. Or we can take that same decagon and match it up with some triangles, and they'll tessellate together. Well, the thing on your mind might be, how do I make some creative tessellations, not out of shapes like hexagons and polygons and, and whatever, but out of images like foxes or superheroes or fish or iguana heads or other foxes or birds? Well, stay tuned. In the next video that you'll see later on, we're going to make our own, and for that, you're going to need this equipment. Well, I hope you enjoyed the first of several lessons.